everybody, and welcome to the first ever airing of our new podcast, Twisted, where fantasies are made into realities. And by realities, we mean the exile of the false promises of poetic justice. My name is Remy Hidalgo. I'm Carol Hahn. And I'm Cosette Nair. On today's episode of Twisted, we are tackling the Disney favorite, Tangled. Overall, it's not bad. It definitely avoids the hit list of the worst <laughs> of the Disney animations, but we will be reimagining its ending because we feel like Mother Gothel needs her justice. Exactly. The poetic justice trope that Disney tries to produce in every film is just starting to get a bit old. Every story follows the basic poetic justice plot in which the good characters, who are usually conventionally beautiful and come from royalty, triumph over all their challenges and fulfill their dreams, whereas almost all of the bad villains, who are generally not considered in society to be physically attractive, suffer greatly, are not allowed the chance to heal and grow, and die or get killed by the end of the film. (laughs) I think poetic justice is super well demonstrated in in Flynn. Um, like, don't get me wrong, he's my favorite Disney male romantic interest, but come on. He gets a girl, he gets away without doing any time in prison, even though he's, like, literally on death row by the time at the end of the movie. And all the while, the crooks that he's working up, that he's working with, um, end up in prison. And I feel like, to an extent, like, he helps save the princess, so it's, like, kind of warranted that he gets excused, but at the same time, it's just, like, too good to be true. Like, he gets it all. Yeah, and to some degree, this could fall into the category of the opposite of poetic justice, because we see Flynn start out as the bad guy in the film. He's a robber, he's stolen, um, but in the movie, he's allowed a chance to grow, and he eludes prison despite all the crimes he's committed. Um, yeah, I think so. Like, he's... Well, like, he is kind of a fundamentally good guy, so I feel like it kind of is poetic justice, kind of isn't, because he helps capture... Um, he helps a captured princess escape from her evil stepmother and like by Disney standards he's pretty clean looking handsome as thieves go (laughs) Um, and he's got like a sense of humor you know like he has good morals and deep down he has a conscience and so the theme of poetic justice is sort of restored because it feeds into the idea that being a good person with good intentions gets you good things in life when in reality it's not that simple like your actions are still going to have consequences yeah this is true and this is why i love our version because we explore the unanswered questions that linger in our brains because i'm sure other fans out there might wonder the same so without further ado we introduce our version of rapunzel where we address the questionable relational dynamic of rapunzel's original family the discriminatory class system which traps those in lower economic statuses in ravaging cycles of poverty and substance abuse and the struggles of adolescents who suffer from traumatic childhoods and mental illnesses They had lived in the slums of the kingdom of Corona and had generations of family stuck in the cycles of poverty and substance abuse. Darling, it'll be okay. It's it's too much. I, I need more. Let me just hit my pregnancy cravings. They're spiraling. I'm in the need of weed. You heard the doctor. We can't keep exposing the baby to teratogens like that. For the health of our baby, we have to stop. She's already at the risk of having a disorder. To deal with the stressors of domestic abuse at home, Ariana had taken CBD at a young age. However, as she entered the end of her third trimester, Ariana's withdrawals grew worse and became violent in her pursuit for narcotics. If you don't give it to me, I will die. I'm going to kill myself, Frederick. Frederick, please! Frederick finally caves and in the dead of the night, breaks into their next door neighbor's garden, stealing her homegrown marijuana. As a licensed cannabis cultivator, Mother Gothel grew organic cannabis in her backyard's greenhouse. Greek! Look what we have here. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. My wife, she's experiencing horrible withdrawal and has threatened to end her life if she does not get this. Please, she's carrying my only child and I'm afraid that if she doesn't give birth now, we won't be able to save the baby. Mother Gothel took pity on the family and in her heart felt the need to help. She had lost her daughter to an overdose, and following, began producing cannabis for medical purposes, so she could help prevent people from abusing it, as her daughter once had. Mother Gothel lets the husband go without pressing any charges for breaking and entering, but calls Child Protective Services, and after due process, she She adopts Rapunzel as her own daughter. Due to Ariana's 
drug use during pregnancy, Rapunzel, Rapunzel suffers from an array of mental and physical ailments as she ages, primarily schizophrenia, which causes her to experience severe delusions. Mother Gothel, who loved Rapunzel as her own, decided to move to a secure tower far away from civilization for the safety of Rapunzel and those around her. One day, Rapunzel falls into particularly serious delusions and comes to believe that Mother Gothel is evil. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel does so, and the imaginary prince enters the tower and draws near to her. Meanwhile, Mother Gothel is out getting groceries. Rapunzel, dear, you have to get out of here. Can't you see? The woman you are with is not your true mother. She ruthlessly kidnapped you from your real parents when you were just a baby, and now she keeps you here because she is afraid you will discover the truth. Come with me. I can help you find them, and then we will all live happily ever after. Don't you want that? I knew it. Thank you, darling prince. Let us leave at once. Rapunzel and her imaginary prince descend the tower and venture into the crooked wood. Along the road, they face many obstacles and triers. This place, it's so run down and penurious. Where are we, darling? This is your true home, my love. You probably do not recall because you were only so young. But this is where you were born, where you should truly be. M -m mother is that you? Father, is this all true? Is this where I was destined to be? <laughs> oh yes, darling, welcome home. I've been waiting to say those words ever since that stank witch took you from us. Oh dear, aren't I so glad to see you. Uh, don't mind your mother, as she is not necessarily in the correct headspace right now. Rapunzel reunites with her original parents, but after time, she comes to see their dysfunction and realizes that Mother Gothel saved her from this situation out of love. Slowly, her imaginary prince fades away, and she longs for her Mother Gothel. Rapunzel? Rapunzel, sweetheart, are you there? Rapunzel flings the door open wide and jumps into Mother Gothel's arms. Mother, I missed you so dearly. I'm so sorry I left. I can see now that everything you did was for my own good. I faced so many dangers in the world without you. Thankfully, there was a prince there who protected me the whole way. Or at least I thought there was. Oh dear, I'm so proud of you. There was no prince, Rapunzel. You did that all by yourself. You don't need a man to protect you. The happy family reunites and meets with a psychologist who diagnoses Rapunzel's schizophrenia and develops a treatment plan through behavioral therapy. Rapunzel grows up with a better understanding of her disease and independence to treat it on her own. Rapunzel's mother goes through rehabilitation to work through her addictions and Rapunzel's father attends therapy to heal from his wife's emotional abuse. So what moral dilemmas did we address and resolve in our retelling of the original Rapunzel story? Well, first we addressed the consequences of drug addictions and how those can lead to generational traumas. Um, to add depth to this idea, we showed how those of lower classes are often more susceptible to these traumas due to, frankly, a, a classist structure that's in our social hierarchy. Um, but despite these challenges, our retelling shows that those who fall subject to abuse, addiction, and mental illness are not forever condemned to their situations. Unlike poetic justice would tell you, healing and growth is available to them. Hmm. Exactly, and this provides a direct contrast to the modern Disney version of Rapunzel as well. In the Disney version, the end resolution comes from the fact that Rapunzel is royalty. This is what enables her to live a comfortable life with her family and Finn, who faces no charges for his crimes. In our version, we address the reality where the commodities of the upper class are not available to those of the lower class, so general happiness must be attained without the same advantages provided to the rich. Right, and also we break the Disney trope in which a man, usually a prince, is always the one to liberate the female lead. In our version, Rapunzel believes that a prince is protecting her throughout her journey, but it was just her all along. Even though she was schizophrenic, it was <laughs> channeled within herself and not necessarily an outside force. And this shows that young women don't need men to save them or find purpose in their life. They can do that by their own means and through familial bonds as well. Exactly, and most importantly, our version of Rapunzel shows that everyone, no matter their backgrounds or the trials they face in life, should be allowed the chance to grow and change. 
Our story shows that healing is available to everyone and generational traumas are not set in stone. Right. I feel like that's a really good approach that we have in our podcast is that the story of the couple that originally was suffering so much and kind of just hidden in this corner of the kingdom, they're offered this chance of liberation and proper liberation. Like they're going through therapy, they're going through the proper processes required to heal, not necessarily um, being subject and trapped in their poverty, but given the advantage um, that sometimes isn't offered to all people of varying socioeconomic statuses, and we kind of bridge that barrier. Mm, Yeah. Special thanks to our sponsors, the Allen Association, indicative of our best work. In our modern age, it's difficult to find accountable coworkers, but through the Allen Association, your hiring needs are made easy with four pre-screening algorithms and direct employer to employee communications. And to Trader Joe's, where healthy organic food is a priority. I honestly really recommend trying those talkie ripoffs, y'all. And the chocolate covered granola bars. Those are gas. Tune in next time to Twisted to hear us tackle the reimagination of the United States government. Until next time, we out. Stay delusional.